Jeff Ogilvy, and this is my US Open. It was a crazy US Open. There was a lot of carnage going around. Lots of guys seemed to have a chance and then fell out of contention gradually. And I was kind of the last one that didn't. I was pretty excited to get to Wingfoot. Pretty historic golf club in US golf terms, really, with the Harmon family and all the history and the massacre at Wingfoot in 74. And Greg Norman had a chance in the 80s and stuff. So I was pretty familiar with Wingfoot and how important it was to American golf. So I was just excited to get there say, look, I've played Wingfoot, how cool is this? And my game at the time was really good. I played well at the start of the year. I think I won the match play earlier in the year and I've been contending quite a lot. And my last two majors the year before at the Open and at St Andrews and Baltus Roll, the PGA, I played really well, had a couple of top tens and got a taste for the back end of a major. I probably didn't have any expectations, but I was hopeful to play well. Most of the first three rounds is kind of disappearing from the old brain. Last round is all pretty vivid, especially the last four or five holes. I bogeyed 14 and Phil birdied it behind me. It was a bit flat, but made a really good mental turnaround. It's like, all right, well, you've had a great week, and that's part of the last four holes, and if it's good enough, it's good enough. Otherwise, you can hold your head up high and say you had a great US Open, and we'll look forward to next year. Up at 17, Jeff will be on the tee. 17 had messed with me all week. It's, the tee shot wasn't working for me for whatever reason. I drove it right, I think, nearly every day. Sunday again, I, I hit it way right in the trees. Way right, he's playing falters. Yeah, that uh, was where he hit it yesterday. And it was so bad that I could only advance it up into the rough, somewhere short of the green, into a spot where it was really going to be difficult to hit my third shot on the green even. We've all had those moments where we let self-pity get the hold of us and you start thinking about all the bad things you've done. You're kind of throwing this chance away, what are you doing, you're an idiot, kind of stuff. When it gets to that extreme end of such a big tournament, the higher intelligence inside my head just said that it's too important to have self-pity here. Just do your thing and finish and then complain about it when you're done, but don't complain about it now. I think I was staring straight at the ground. I think my caddy at the time, Squirrel, said, well, your only choice really is to chip it in. You don't expect it to happen, but I think sometimes the idea gets planted in your head and it seems, oh, that's a, that could happen. Jeff Ogilvy's fourth. Just get it onto the green and let gravity do its thing and roll it towards the hole. And if I land it in the right spot, then the flag might get in the way. The line's good. Home. <laughs> what a par. <laughs> that is, that's something. Um... I felt like I was kind of letting it all slide on the 17th hole. And... You chip it in and it's a feeling of, well, maybe this is my week. Kind of all of a sudden hits you, it's like, wow, let's do this. I walk to 18 pretty excited about the whole thing. You've got to the 72nd hole, you're saying with a chance. You can wait for this forever, let's just hit a good tee shot. It's a good drive, it's very narrow down there, about 24 yards wide with an angle. It's the best tee shot I hit all week. Smashed it in at miles, right up the left hand side of the fairway. That was a fun walk from the tee up to the fairway. And then got up there and found the ball was in a divot, like a sandy kind of divot. Not a bad one, but it was enough to be pretty annoying at that point. I had a great second shot, I thought. It was going straight down the pin. I thought I had plenty of club to get there, but maybe you get that one grain of sand between the face and the ball, and it's just enough to take four or five yards off your normal nine-iron, I think I hit. And that last hole at Wingfoot, I mean, it's the 20 feet around the hole, it's going to go towards the hole. Everywhere else, it's going to repel it. And it was just a bit short, it ran all the way down, short of the last green. But funnily enough, it's a shot I'd been working on for two or three years. My coach had been telling me, you need this little kind of 20-yard kind of hit shot off this tight grass. You've got to be able to do this. It's kind of the pinnacle of pitching, you know, it's the hardest shot to hit. You've got to work on this shot, it's going to be important to you one day. It turns out that I get to the last hole at US Open, I've got to get up and down with basically the shot I'd been working on for two or three years. Did he hit it? Chance. It just came out perfectly, like the dream pitch. I could stand on the chipping ground, get 25 shots, and only two would come out that way. And when it does, you're like, wow, how nice was that? I want to do that. It came out like that. Um, incredible. Perfect. Plus five is the lead right now. The rest is history, I guess. We watched Phil hit the attempt at the second shot, trying to go over the tree, and it didn't make it. 
Alfie kind of gave me that sneaky little kind of smirk that he can give me. He told me, well, this is looking pretty good for you now. Jeff Ogilvy survives Wingfoot and wins the United States Open. Phil was the one everyone focused on, but Monty did the same kind of thing. Uh, he did it from the middle of the fairway. I know Padre had a chance and let it go. I think Jimmy Furyk had a chance and let it go. I mean, a lot of guys left that tournament scratching their head thinking, oh, I really, that was one I let go. Powering the last four holes, that was kind of the mini goal I set for myself on the 15th tee. So the fact that I, I chipped in on 17 to do it and then made clearly the best up and down I've ever made. It would be a good up and down on a Tuesday morning with your friends. So to do that in the last hole, you was open. Very satisfying, very kind of proud of myself, I guess. And you think about those situations your whole life and I actually hit the right shots at the right time. It's a very nice feeling. Usually I probably judge myself physically when I finish a tournament. Yeah, you hit the ball really well this week, you swung it well, your putting stroke was great, whatever, but the US Open is the pride in the hanging in there. Because that's the hard part. It's quite easy, relatively, to hit nice shots, but it's very difficult to hang in there when everything in your brain is telling you to just go away and hide it. If you physically give it away, that happens, but mentally giving it away, that's a hard one to live with, and to not do it, it's very nice. I mean, you've got those names, and it's incredible that my name's on the same trophy as theirs, and it means a lot more when it's that trophy. The further separated I get from it, the more I feel like I belong on it, but at first, it, especially because it's all bright when they first engrave it, right? All the other ones are kind of, man, you're all bright. It's like, well, do I really fit on this trophy? Am I really supposed to be on there? As time goes on, it's just a source of pride, I guess, looking back, that I've managed to win the same tournament as some of these unbelievable players. And one that all the great players at the end of their career, if they don't have one on their mantelpiece, they probably feel like there's a little bit missing.